Um, hi, hello, um, namaste. Um, I'm originally from ne uh, Nepal, so uh, I'm currently living in Germany and working in Germany. Um, today I'm going to talk about building data workflows um, with Luigi um, and Kubernetes. Uh, before we start, um, a few things about me. Um, my name is Lord Kumar. Um, I'm currently working at Breininger. Uh, Breininger is a traditional fashion house, mostly um, popular in South and West Germany. Um, and currently, Breininger is expanding in online uh, e-commerce uh, space quite rapidly. Um, I'm working um, at Breininger with a data team, data lake team. Um, and we use Python, um, Luigi with Kubernetes, uh, running on Google Cloud. Um, I was a web dev in past life, um, and then companies came to me, and then they wanted to do, me to do data, so I moved to the more data engineering role. Um, so, yeah. And you can find me on the internet um, as my last name. Um, so, before I start, um, oh, can I ask one question? Do you work with um, data engineering? It's kind of a new term. How many of are you using in data engineering? Okay, okay, slowly, yeah, slowly it's growing. Oh, quite, quite, actually quite a lot, uh, more than I expected. Huh? Um, how many of are you using Luigi? Whoa. How many of are you using Airflow? Okay. Pretty decent. Okay, so today I'm, um, I'll just introduce Luigi because Luigi is pretty small. It's really lightweight. Um, I think if you just uh, see the README um, of the Luigi, you'll pretty much get the idea. Um, then I'll, I'll talk about Kubernetes, how you can run Luigi in Kubernetes, and I think that part is pretty interesting um, for this crowd. Okay, um, so. Just a few things about Luigi. Um, it's a workflow pipeline tool. Um, um, if you are using Airflow, pretty similar to Airflow. Um, it was open sourced by Spotify. Um, it's already pretty mature, uh, actually pretty old. Um, and you can write basically the data flow or basically pipelines as a normal Python code. Um, so that's always a plus point. It's really lightweight, and it comes with basic uh, web UI to to basically um, uh, for uh, to see the jobs and stuff like that. Uh, it has tons of packages. You can you can run Hadoop jobs using this um, as a orchestration tool. You can run BigQuery. You can run AWS um, stuff if you need to upload some file or if you need to query Redshift stuff like this. It already has tons of country packages, so you can do almost everything um, with really few lines of code, right? Um, and it uh, doesn't have scheduler, um, by the way. Uh, I'll come back to this point later in, in my talk. So uh, just to demonstrate, let, let's, um, let's um, make a use case. Let's, let's assume one use case. Um, Let's say you, uh, you work in a company where you, they, they have ice cream franchise, yeah? They have a lot of ice cream shops, and the manager or your colleagues or data analysts want to see the daily sales of yesterday. Um, every morning they come to work, and then they want to see what happened yesterday, how much um, the company sold, right? Um, so we need to do a few things to, to achieve this, right? Um, you have a um, um, prod database where all the transactions happen, right? So um, you want to dump the prod database uh, to somewhere because you don't want to do aggregation in prod database, otherwise you, you can kill the prod da database. Um, and then you want to ingest somewhere in, in analytics database. It could be Redshift, it could be um, uh, BigQuery, or it could be anything. It could be Postgres, whatever. Um, and then you want to run aggregation on the, this analytics database, and then yeah, update the dashboard and send out to everyone, right? So since we are in a Python conference, 
And I know all of you are really good <laughs> Python developers, so we, we wrote a, you wrote an awesome Python script and um, schedule using cron. So DOM sells data, ingest to analytics, database, and then aggregate data, and then cool, uh, maybe profit, right? So it looks pretty great, right? I mean, um, runs, works. Maybe not, like we have a couple of issues with this implementation. Uh, what happens when you're fast on fails? So if you see um, this here, we, we scheduled hourly because we think maybe the dumping database takes a bit of time uh, and then ingestion takes a bit of time, so we kind of managed our cron to, to start one after another, right? Uh, assuming that the first one finishes uh, within one hour, second one finishes within one hour, and stuff like this. Um, and one hour because everybody is doing big data, right? I mean, we have big data. So, um, so yeah, we have got a couple of problems here. What happens when first one fails? Um, what if first one takes longer than one hour? Um, or um, if you have to run this uh, same reporting for the last five days or last one month or last one year, which can happen. Um, and how do you see if these jobs ran uh, all successfully? And um, somehow, if you, have, if you mistakenly run multiple times, what happens to your dashboard? Like, is it broken or what happens, right? So um, since um, now uh, we know our use case and we, we saw the Python implementation, I want to show you the, the Luigi implementation of this. Um, and I have to open my Python. So yeah, so this is uh, my Luigi implementation. Um, I put everything in one file, so um, um, yeah. Yeah, I already hear some laugh. Um, I put everything in one file and you can see SQL queries, plain SQL queries, so don't worry about that. What, what I want to figure, point out is how you can implement some kind of task or uh, some kind of job in Luigi. Um, I can um, increase the font size. Um, be, be, be. Is this good enough? So uh, the first thing um, I wrote is a DOM database task, and then I have load to analytics DB task, and then I have a aggregate task, right? So um, the, the one important thing you see here is load to analytics DB task depends on the, the previous task, so the DOM database task. Right? Um, and if you see the aggregate, aggregate task, this depends on the previous one. Um, and the, the last one depends on uh, the uh, previous one. So this is how you can chain the, the series of bad jobs together in Luigi. And um, running this is pretty easy. Um, so uh, I'm currently using PPNB, so I have to trigger like this. So I have to go to that directory and then I can just run. So the output looks pretty, pretty a lot of stuff in there, but you can see here we ran like four, four tasks um, and then we have the report, right? Um, yeah, so looks pretty, pretty okay. Um, and if you see in the UI, um, this is how it will uh, look like. So First, um, I dump the database and then load it to our analytics database and then did the aggregation and sales report is ready. So we kind of solve our uh, problems that I mentioned earlier um, here. Oh, sorry, where was it? Here. So uh, we solve some of the problems, like what happens when first one fails? It's, they are chained together, so the next one will just um, stay in waiting state. Um, um, and we also saw the second one that uh, if first one takes longer than that, it will just keep waiting, right? Um, then I'll come to uh, the other points uh, later. So, so we saw that you can do um, kind of chaining of multiple 
batch scripts or batch jobs, um, and then you can run with simple command line uh, use. And and um, since this is a reporting thing that has to be in production, that you some you have to somehow run it. So as I said earlier, Luigi doesn't have scheduler, so you have to uh, use cron. Usually, cron is used, so you, you need some way to trigger the the task. So if I um, run with Luigi, it would be um, oh, where is my what? So, so yeah, if I have to run with cron, it would look like this. So, I was pretty surprised when I um, saw that Luigi doesn't have its own scheduler because it's pretty common to have scheduler in and this kind of pipeline tool. Um, but it turns out that it's actually not bad. It's it's a, it's a design decision um, made by Luigi team. Um, not having scheduler means you are really flexible to do uh, whatever you like. Uh, you are really flexible to run from different places, and one of them is from Kubernetes. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about in um, um, the next. Um, so what is Kubernetes um, or cron job in Kubernetes? You can run a lot of stuff in Kubernetes. You can run normal services like web apps, which run 24-7. Um, you can run um, uh, you can run um, jobs which do a particular thing um, and then they they are done like, uh, and then cron job is basically um, jobs in scheduled um, like with the cron um, so the jobs are known um, also called as run to completion so they um, uh, Kubernetes runs it, and then when there, uh, there is an error or a failure, then it reschedules them. So it always tries to complete the job. So uh, we saw earlier that it was um, pretty easy to run from local, but what about Kubernetes? So I have a simple Kubernetes setup on my local, um, local machine. Um, I installed a Minikube, so I have Minikube cluster running. And if you see here, so um, so this was my uh, Luigi code. So what I did is I have b built a Docker image out of it, which is pretty easy. Uh, nine lines of code, and then you have Docker image. I have uploaded this image uh, on Docker registry and deployed to Kubernetes, which is Minikube right now on my local. And uh, Kubernetes deployment like, looks like this. Um, and then on, uh, running on Kubernetes, uh, you can see the command run Python and Luigi, stuff like that. So which is the setup I have here. Um, you can see here I have one cron job. And then I also deployed the Luigi uh, daemon on, also on Kubernetes. So you can see here um, deployment Luigi. And the UI of the Luigi, you see um, this is the, the, the UI of the Luigi um, that I uh, deployed. So all this setup I already did beforehand because um, we don't have much time. Um, but if you are interested in setup, I have a project in GitHub so you can easily follow it. So um, let's see. Um, I have one cron job here, um, and I want to run it. So this is scheduled uh, from 7 to 16. Um, so um, right now it's 16, 19, so it will not run. But I can also manually trigger this task uh, using cron, uh, kubecron um, command line tool. So let's see um, what happens. So I should see a pod which is in running state. And you see here. And then let's see in our Luigi UI. So you see, there are a couple of tasks in pending state. Some of are already done. And there is one. Uh, running the aggregate task is in running state, and this is how you can track the, the the progress of the jobs. Some of them are done, and if there is error, you could see it here. Other are just waiting here. So, looks looks pretty cool. Um, 
So yeah, we are able to run on Kubernetes, and Kubernetes has concept of this cron job, which creates a job, which creates pod. So it sounds like a bit like a Russian doll, but but it uh, it's pretty um, easy once you you get into this, right? So our that's what it, uh, the Kubernetes did here. Uh, I had deployed the cron job, and then it created a couple of jobs, uh, actually one job, and then which created pod, uh, which is still running. So, yeah, we are able to run Luigi, um, same way I ran on local, but this has quite a bit of benefits. The main benefit being the uh, scalability of your pipeline. So, since it's on Kubernetes, you could scale endlessly. In our case, we use Google, Google um, Kubernetes engine. Uh, that means at midnight or after midnight, around two, we have hundreds of jobs running, which are automatically scaled up. Kubernetes automatically scales up because the load is really high during that time. And then after all the jobs are done, then the, all the, the Kubernetes nodes go down. So we only have dedicated two nodes, rest are dynamic scaling. So this is, uh, I personally find really powerful. Um, but apart from this, you get all the benefits of Kubernetes, uh, from containerization to to uh, easier deployment to flexible flexibility with the infrastructure and stuff like this. Um, so that is it. Um, it. It's a bit rust, um, but. Um, you can follow with the, uh, the, the example uh, on my GitHub, um, and then you can, if you're interested, just try this. Um, yeah, so I personally find it very powerful um, setup. That um, Louis being lightweight, it's really easy to containerize and deploy on Kubernetes. Um, as a result, you can build complex, complex batch processes, uh, which are easy to scale and maintain. Um, and you get the both, a benefit of both, uh, the pipeline to Luigi and then the infrastructure side of Kubernetes, um, like horizontal scaling uh, and the deployment like, like I, I said earlier. Um, yeah. Um, so, in short, um, that was it. Um, I have one hidden slide, which is my team is hiding. If uh, if you like Python, um, if you like Kubernetes, those kind of stuff, uh, please feel free to talk to me. Um, we are just based in Stuttgart, just two hours from here. Um, and we are really looking uh, for developers. With that, um, any questions? Well, thanks, Nars. And any? Yeah, please, sure. Uh, hi, thanks for the talk. Great, awesome. Uh, question, if you have users or customers in multiple time zones, do you have an experience like what's the best uh, like substitute for CronTab to manage tasks in multiple time zones? Oh, um, I personally didn't really have to deal with that because um, our developers or our users are all in the same time zone. So, um, yeah. I have, unfortunately, no right answer for that. OK, the white gentleman. Uh, so I, I have a question about here. I'm here. Uh, you're looking in the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, does Luigi support the rescuing of jobs, meaning if? Sorry? The rescuing of jobs. L so what? as a workflow management system, if you're in the middle of your job and something failed, can you go and fix it and just start from where you failed? Yeah, Luigi handles that. Um, in my setup, the, the setup with the Kubernetes I showed you, Kubernetes actually handles it. So we are not using the Luigi feature. So whenever something fails, 
Kubernetes, Kubernetes will run again. So we are using that part, but Luigi can also do that. Yeah. Hi, thank you for the talk. Um, I was wondering, have you encountered uh, situations where you need different uh, Kubernetes uh, pods to have different uh, rights, and how do you manage that? Um, For example, you want one job to run with uh, production rights, but maybe another job to run with dev rights, not the same rights? Yeah, so uh, usually we use service accounts uh, to run um, jobs. So mm -hmm. one job has one service account, the other job has uh, other service account, and these service accounts have limited uh, permissions. So if you need a storage account access, you only give a uh, storage account access to this service account. So okay. that's how we do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. Um, we are currently in the stage where we are evaluating Luigi versus Airflow. Uh, yeah. I have to admit, yeah, so, th 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 I mean, I'm looking for a recommendation, you know. Uh, so, w what we saw is that it was really pretty hard to, um, to write uh, a code that express uh, nested steps. Uh, and the complex um, uh, like uh, hierarchy of, of yeah. uh, tasks. We found a way to make it with Airflow, and I guess maybe there is a way to do it with Luigi, and we just missed it. Do you know how to do that? Yeah, uh, with Luigi it's a bit complicated. Um, the branching model is supported, uh, but it, it's a bit hard. Um, Airflow has definitely better um, mechanism on this case. Um, on Luigi, we actually don't do that kind of super complicated branching uh, or nested uh, uh, jobs. Okay, uh, and really, really quick, um, did you work on a use case where you have a NFS mount into your Kubernetes image? Sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, did you mount a disk to your, to your Docker image? Monitor the disk? Um, did you mount a disk? Uh, like, we have a problem, uh, which is uh, accessing large uh, quantity of data, mm -hmm. and we want to move to Docker instead of accessing the local disk. And uh, one barrier that we have is uh, uh, to mount NFS uh, data to the image and access it. My question is, did you have a similar use case? Um, not really. Um, so uh, with Lu Luigi, we usually only process the, the smaller data set, and we do, and we do Luigi is mostly for for um, orchestration part. So all the heavy li lifting we actually do with other tools like a BigQuery and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so yeah. Okay. Thank you. No. The blue. Hi. So I was one of the few hands uh, that were raised when you asked who was using Airflow. Um, yeah. So I was just wondering what your uh, reason was for using uh, Luigi versus Airflow, if there was a particular reason. Yeah, um, so uh, the Luigi and Airflow are both Python thing, but they are really have a different um, use case. Uh, Airflow is really big and it comes with everything you need. However, the one main um, uh, drawback was the Kubernetes support is still not so good. They recently added the Kubernetes support where each task can run on a Kubernetes pod. But this is not so stabilized yet. And this was one of the main reasons that we, we prefer Luigi. Um, other than that, uh, Airflow is also like, if you have your pipelines, you have to copy in some directory. So you cannot really do um, the Docker, you cannot really build Docker images and deploy like I did uh, with, the, with the Luigi. So the packaging and uh, running, um, deploying, deploying um, Luigi is a lot, lot easier and flexible. And Kubernetes, oh, sorry, uh, Airflow, you are always um, in the Airflow way, way of doing things. So it's really heavy, heavy thing. It gives a lot of things, but it's also not that flexible. Hi, uh, question, uh, how do you, thanks for the talk. Uh, how do you handle the logs? So when integrating with Kubernetes, do you get the logs from the pod then in Luigi? Or? Um, 
So uh, since we use a Google Kubernetes engine, the logs are sent to stack driver by default. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so if you saw the, the, the running, uh, Luigi will basically give the STD out, and which is uh, sent to, to the stack driver. OK, and then uh, how do you handle the secrets? So if the secrets are pushed to the logs, do you oh, we use them? Kubernetes so secrets, uh, so they are not in the logs. OK. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, is it possible to configure Luigi in a way to run jobs not just based on the cron tab, but also on, I don't know, some Redis message queues or a file being dropped in a directory or something like that? And how does that work? Because you were like starting a Docker container for, for every run, but I think something would be there uh, for all of the time. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting use case. Uh, we are also thinking about that. Um, there is no, no built-in way to do it, so you have to build something yourself. Like if you upload a um, file to S3 and then you want to trigger Luigi, then you have to build this part yourself. So um, like I saw earlier, uh, running Luigi is just a command line thing, right? So you would, uh, 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 you would run this command when the file is uploaded. So this part you have to implement yourself. There's no default way to do it. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you for your talk. Um, when you showed your example with the code and the dependencies between the tasks, uh, it looks like um, the code is kind of coupled uh, strongly to, to the code that is running. So the, the Luigi task definition part and the stuff that is running. Um, is this um, very flexible, or how strong is like the vendor locking uh, if someone decides to use Luigi uh, and then wants to sw switch to something? Is it complicated to do that? Uh, as far as I saw, uh, Airflow also has like similar kind of contrib. So Luigi has really a lot of contrib. So I mean, it's an open source, so it's it's not really a vendor lock locking thing. That's um, not really what I meant. It's, it's about how how deep is integration of the, the managing of the task and definition of the uh, dependencies uh, and the code itself. Is it coupled uh, a lot or uh, are the, the stuff that you want to do, the scripts that you're, you're running, um, separate uh, things and, and you just define the, the tasks uh, separately and can edit, for example, some command line options uh, for what you want to run? So, Easily. yeah, I think I got your point. So what I do is we usually build one pipeline for certain stuff, like, uh, like building one report is one, one pipeline. So this is one uh, image, Docker image for us. Uh, so we have like hundreds of images um, to handle all the workloads uh, for the company. Does that answer your question? Uh, it's, I'm getting a little bit different direction, but maybe take this offline. Yeah, well, we can also talk later, yeah. OK, uh, we could probably have one more short and quick question. Yes, please. And probably the last one. And, uh, how do you test your data pipelines? Is it integrated with CSU pipelines? Yes. Um, uh, actually, testing Luigi is really, really easy because it's really lightweight. So we use PyTest to test it. We have some extension built um, to support Luigi, uh, but generally it's really, really easy. It's like any other Python code. Yeah. So thanks for joining me. Uh, I really liked it. There was a lot of questions. I was a bit afraid when I submitted the talk, uh, thinking that there might not be not enough interest, but I'm really excited that there were a lot of questions. And if you use uh, Python in data engineering, I'm really I really want to talk to you. Um, please come to me. Thank you.